It's going to now be Tony's Tank versus Stretch here, part of Loser's Top 64. Yeah, so, um, I remember there was a time in uh, Smash 4 where Mr. E was having a lot of success in this matchup with Lucina. But, uh, I just haven't seen much of it in Ultimate to really know if it's still pretty good for Lucina or not. I can only theory craft based off of, uh, like, you know, what I know about the two characters. And, uh, yeah. I, I think Lucina has a good hitboxes for dealing with spin dash, at least. And great edge guarding tools, because Sonic's recovery is pretty exploitable. Yeah. And, uh, Stretch Up has proven that he's actually really good at edge guarding with this character as well. When he finds the opening. Oh, so oh, close on the read, too, because he was about to read the direction I heard on that one. Yeah. Oh, great, great combo there for Tony to sneak in the back here. Oh, another one? Okay, so, when you're fighting a Sonic that knows you're going to ledge jump, don't do it. Because <laughs> it, it, it's free backers all day, and eventually they'll kill. Oh my god, I, I don't know how he didn't get up smashed by that. It looked like he down aired directly into it. Oh, almost with the forward smash. Would have been a good call, but unfortunately Tony's going to get around it. Ooh, there's the forward smash. Great move for Sonic. Yeah, Stretch kind of swinging a little bit er too early. Like, being very preemptive with his uh, punishes. And, and Tony's getting a lot of free hits that way. No shield breaker there. Oh, yeah. See, he's trying to, like, time his moves to beat out Spin Dash. But he's just barely off. And uh, it's, Tony's just getting free damage for it. That's actually a great punish. That's the thing about Sonic too, and something that I did talk to Sonic a little bit about, specifically when it comes to playing the character, is that because the character has a lot of speed and abilities to stall out, you look at the way oh, that Tony is playing, one. he's able to just kind of like call in place and look at the way that Stretch is going to react. Yep. That's like the thing about being good with Sonic. Like, they don't have to immediately commit to uh, the spin dash. They can just start charging it and see how you, you know, react to them doing it, and then they can, uh, you know, time their attack appropriately. Yeah, like, look at Tony specifically at the light situation we just saw a little bit earlier. He stalled and he waited to see how, look at Stretch, see, goes to the forward air, and now Tony slips in, takes center stage, and look at the percent he's at. It's, it's more of a bait and punish situation. He's looking for a Stretch to make the first play. Yep, that's how, we, you know, Sonic is meant to be played, honestly. One of the best, like, bait and punish characters in this game because he just has the speed to like whip punish you from so far yeah. uh, on the stage. Okay. So far, so good though for Tony. You have to get touch, touch on this stock right now. Might even be working on a JV2 stock. Okay, that's a good trade for Tony. Almost getting a, another four smash on the landing stretch, trying to find some type of momentum here. It's really difficult though. Almost ran to another four smash. Oh, yeah, see, look at that. He just has to charge a little bit longer, baits out the counter at the same time. This is big for Tony here with 140% on stretch. Finally, you go with the dancing blade. Nice, goes for the first two hits, backs off. Yeah, but there's the back here, man. Tony got so many backers in this, uh, this game already. He's just really good at finding that opening on stretch. And uh, yeah, right now, man, Stretch is he's just having a really rough time in neutral, I want to say. Yeah, it, it, but like I said, it just comes down to the way that Tony is playing Sonic demonstrates like, how the character is meant to be played. Specifically, just how that works for Sonic's toolkit, but also how Sonic means are able to definitely use that to its fullest extent. I think about some of the great, 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 great FGC players like, you know, Justin Wong. You know, he knows that sometimes to win the game, you got to play a little lame, especially when you have such a lead. And like Stride said, when you have such a big lead and the speed to whiff punish and dash in and out of specific zones like that, it's really, really bad. Yeah, it's just it's is really hard. Like, it's uh, even offline is difficult to deal with this type of play style with Sonic. So yeah. imagine like 
when there's just a slight delay or like you're just off of your timing because of one line, it's just punishing that type of style is very hard. But we'll see. We'll see how Stretch does here on Kalos. I kind of like Kalos here only because you have more room on this stage to see how he approaches with Spin Dash, I, I want to say. And um, yeah, this isn't a badly seen stage by any means. He has the hitboxes to cover the platforms pretty well too, if he chooses to, you know, retreat to those. So far though, yeah, Stretch having a, a rough time punishing some uh, key Sonic habits. Namely the homing attack. Ooh, caught the roll? Not gonna be enough to kill, but finally it's able to punish some of these offensive habits from uh, Tony. Oh, a back air much safer on shield than uh, it seemed. Back to the ledge again. Oh, nice choice of the up smash. Catching that neutral get up. Yeah, very, very good stuff there for Tony. One of the few times Stretch was able to get a, a early kill, or a kill without taking too much percent. And that was a great double parry punish from him as well. Nice. Starting to find the these hitboxes he can use to interrupt the spin dash. Yeah. Which is what Stretch is definitely needs to be looking for. Nice. Ooh, he able there's to catch him right breaker. as he holds the shield breaker. Yep, that's a stop on the ledge. Nice. He was, he's been looking for that shield breaker quite a bit, but uh, it's good for him finally to, you know, get to break the shield this time. Yeah, that was just a really good call out too, because a lot of people just like to hold shield when they land anyway. He just super uh, read that from Tony. Nice. Finally learning that you can roll to uh, force him to hit the ground on the homing attack. <laughs> or spot dodge, but spot dodge is a little bit harder to time. Yeah, and this is like best case scenario when you're fighting a Sonic. Just having a stock lead. Yeah, it's honestly what you need to kind of win is just maintain a stock lead against Sonic. Because just like he likes to win punish you, you could definitely kind of force Sonic to play his hand a little early if you have a lead. Because he has yeah. to commit to you, but he oh. calls out that recovery at the last second. Man, he's really doing a great job of utilizing that, uh, that new up smash from Sonic. Very good kill option now. I don't really see the Sonic changes as a buff. I just see them more to fixes, to be honest with you. Well, up air is definitely a fix. Yeah, for sure. But up smash is for sure a buff <laughs> from Sonic. It's flat out better move now. And I guess also, the fact that his up air works functionally now, we're not seeing much of it from Tony, but he uh, has tons of setups with it. Speaking of Tony, done a oh. Oh, not enough to kill, but did a great job of bringing this game back. He can close yeah. it out though. This is still, again, best to have three range. What a good wait there. Oh. He canceled it out with a down air. Look at that. Tony's looking to finally move in and out. I like that patience that once again holds the kill for Tony. And he seeks Bad his roll. way in with the Stretch. forward air. Oh man. Match of, I want to say it was a matchup experience there from Stretch, thinking that he could uh, cross up roll spin dash. But that's exactly what Sonic's wait for. Uh, so, like, roll into them when they're charging that move.